Hey guys, uh, hello and good evening. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking about how to efficiently and quickly write a SOAP note. So uh, SOAP stands for subjective, so this means what does the patient think? Objective, what do I as the caregiver see? Uh, it's not what I think, it's what I see. So it's completely non-biased. Um, assessment is essentially a one-sentence summary of what I think is wrong with the patient and plan what do I want to do it's pretty easy once you get the SOAP down pat you can really churn through these babies real quick so let's start with subjective so like we said um, this is what the patient um, thinks so I will ask these questions typically um, just to get the patient's opinion so uh, I use a mnemonic or I used to I guess it just comes naturally now but um, essentially, it's O-P-P-P-Q-R-S-T-A. stands for onset, progression, palliative, provoke, quality, radiation, severity, time, and anything else. So, O, onset. So when did this start? Has this been going on for, you know, a day? Has it been going on for a month? How about a year? Um, you know, based on the onset, I'm kind of able to, right off the bat, determine is this something that's acute or is this something that, um, you know, isn't really um, going to kill this patient within 10 minutes. So, um, you know, if they come in with chest pain, and I'll kind of use that as my example for the rest of the video. Uh, if they come in with chest pain and they said, oh, you know, doc, I've had this chest pain for six months. Odds are probably not having a heart attack. Um, but if they come in and they say, oh, I've been having this chest pain for about the past hour, then, you know, it could come back up on my severity scale and say, mm, maybe this could be something more serious. So, uh, that's what onset is. Progression, um, how has this chest pain changed? So has it gotten worse over the past hour? Has it gotten better? Um, just kind of figure out, you know, what what has changed with the, uh, the presentation that the patient is telling you. Palliative, so this is a fancy word for uh, saying uh, what makes it better. So is this chest pain better with rest? Is it better with nitroglycerin? Uh, is it better with defecation? Uh, you know, just ask, you know, questions that you would think are important um, or, you know, kind of probe the patient, you know, what makes it better? Oh, I don't know. Well, kind of help them out and figure out what you think might make the pain better. Provoke, what makes the pain worse? So again, with the chest pain, does running a mile make it worse? Does eating, or defecating, bending over, et cetera, et cetera. Um, figure out what makes this pain, you know, tick for this guy. What, what makes it a lot worse? Quality, so what does the pain feel like? So again, with the chest pain, is it sharp? Is it dull? Um, is it throbbing? Is it a tightness? Does it feel like someone's sitting on your chest? Um, just kind of find out what it feels like to the patient. Uh, radiation, uh, so does this chest pain spread into your neck, into your arm? Uh, is it going into your back, into your abdomen? You kind of figure out, you know, is it spreading, essentially? Severity, so this is on a scale of 1 to 10. I always like to um, kind of, you know, prep my patients when I say, okay, so this is a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the worst that you've ever felt in your life. And a lot of the time, surprisingly, I'll have patients say, oh, it's a 10 when they're up sitting on their phone, you know, watching TV. But then I'll kind of rephrase the question and I'll say, okay, if you're a female, have you had a baby? And they'll be, you know, a lot of times, yes. Okay, so delivering your child was a 10. So now compare that to delivering your child, what would you rate it? And you know, they'd say, oh, well, you know, that was nothing compared, or delivering a baby was nothing, um, or this is nothing compared to delivering a baby. So it really helps them kind of um, put things into um, perspective. Uh, with guys, you know, I'll say, I'm going to, you know, chop your leg off with a chainsaw without any anesthetic. That's a 10. Uh, and then they most of the time realize, oh, okay, well, maybe this isn't as bad as I say it is. Uh, time, so kind of redundant, um, you know, have you ever had this before, um, how long has it been going on, etc., etc. A is anything else, so I usually just kind of, you know, vaguely ask the patient, is there anything else you think is important or anything that you want to tell me, um, or anything that you as the caregiver can think of that would be important that you want to find out, that's what A stands for. Objective, uh, so this is the part of the exam that is what you think, or not what you think, what you see. So this is not opinionated, this is just based on facts. So medications, uh, so you want to know all the meds they're taking, the frequency, the strength, how they're taking it. So 
If they say I'm taking Tylenol, are they taking it rectally? I would hope not, but hey, you never know. Um, you just want to make sure you're able to uh, be able to answer these questions when your attendings ask you. And off, obviously, based on their meds, you can actually get a pretty good medical history. You know, if they're on metformin, lisinopril, and simvastatin, you're able to determine right off the bat, okay, probably a diabetic with high blood pressure and high cholesterol. So it's pretty quick. Allergies, also important medication allergies, environmental allergies, and food allergies. Uh, and not only what allergies are, but what happens when they have that reaction. Do they have anaphylaxis? Do they have hives? Um, all of the above is quite important. Past medical history, so uh, this is also important. I like to use the mnemonic called the CHADS. Um, I guess I don't really use it anymore. It just comes naturally, but the CHADS is a way to remember it. So it stands for uh, T is thyroid issues, so hyperhypothyroidism. H is hypertension. E is emphysema. C is cancer. Um, H is hyperlipidemia. A is asthma. D is diabetes. And S is stroke. Surgical history. So also important, if you have a patient who comes to the emergency room and they're complaining of abdominal pain, uh, I think it'd be kind of important to know what surgeries they've had in their abdomen, don't you think? Because uh, if they're presenting with this abdominal pain, you want to know, okay, if they've had tons of surgeries in their abdomen, is this because of uh, scar tissue forming in adhesions, causing like an obstructive picture? Or, um, you know, other, you know, surgical um, issues that, uh, could be pertinent, you know, have they had their gallbladder out? Um, so you're effectively able to rule out, okay, is this acute cholecystitis? Have they had their appendix out? Well, more than likely, if they've had it out, they don't have another appendix, so probably not appendicitis. So just little things like that can really help you narrow down your differential quite quickly. Family history. So let's say our hypertensive guy comes to the ER and he's complaining of abdominal pain. Um, that's radiating to his back. So it might be important to know, okay, does this guy have a family history of abdominal aortic aneurysms or abdominal dissections? Because those can be congenitally passed uh, with different uh, congenital disease. Marfan syndrome uh, is one of the ones that's pretty important to pick up on. So um, always want to ask family history. Social history. This is my favorite mnemonic that I uh, still use. So I like the mnemonic pot meth aids. Pretty easy to remember. Pot, meth, AIDS. So pot. P is personal. So something personal about the patient. O, occupation. What do they do for a job? T, travel. Have they traveled? So with this whole Ebola stuff um, or other weird diseases, kind of important to know. Have they been to Africa um, or Swahili or something like that? Or I don't know. Swahili, I think Swahili is actually a language, not a country. I, geography was not my strong suit. Um, M is military. Uh, do they have any military experience? Sometimes some of the military people um, can have different vaccinations than the average American can. Um, that also means they can be exposed to other things um, kind of related to the travel with their deployment. E is exercise. Um, pretty important to know that as well. T is tobacco. So chewing tobacco, smoking tobacco. Uh, H uh, is hobbies. I don't really ask that anymore. It's just kind of a placeholder. But hey, if you want to know that your patient likes to crochet on the weekends, that's your business. A is alcohol. Um, make sure you find out how much alcohol, whether it's, you know, four 12-ounce beers or four 24-ounce tall boys. You know, it's important to know. I is illegal drugs. Um, um, or no, I is... Uh, yeah, I-D stands for illegal drugs. Um, S stands for uh, sexually transmitted diseases. So um, HIV, gonorrhea, chlamydia, etc. And not just do they have them now, but have they ever had it before? Objective. This uh, continued. So after we have our social history going on to vitals, and then our physical exam. I always like to do a head-to-toe exam. So I start H-E-E-N-T. So uh, head, ears, eyes, nose, and throat. Um, then I listen to the heart, listen to the lungs, listen, do an abdominal exam, check for peripheral swelling, and then I do any other specific exams that I need to on the patient. And I always do all five of those exams on every patient. doesn't matter what they come in with. It's always good to get in the habit of doing that. Because um, even, you know, in my 
new practice, I've already found, um, you know, a couple of new murmurs that have never been diagnosed before, just because you're always listening to your patient um, when others may not. Assessment. So this is the two-sentence summary of what you think is going on with your patient. So an assessment for our uh, hypertension guy. Uh, so John is a 58-year-old male with a past medical history of hypertension, hyperlipidemia, type 2 diabetes, and prostate cancer who presents with a two-week history of dysuria. So that's a pretty quick summary. Plan. So personally, I like to organize my plan in bold, nice and neat, with the most acute problem at the top of the list. Uh, and the next slide actually shows a verbatim plan that I created for a patient that I saw uh, sometime over the past year. So this patient um, presented with acute on chronic respiratory failure with hypoxemia and hypercapnia. So I have that in bold. We put her on BiPAP. Uh, we tried her on a BiPAP without or while she's sitting in her chair and uh, consulted pulmonology, put her on duonebs, et cetera, et cetera. So we just kind of say what we're going to do for each, um, you know, title. So this is essentially a COPD exacerbation. Um, and uh, this is what I want to do for it. This is the next one. So she was anemic, and she has iron deficiency anemia. So I want to put in the most recent lab. So hemoglobin was 9.3. She is on iron therapy. Um, we put her on ferrous sulfate twice daily, and she was occult negative. AFib, always when you have an AFib patient, you want to put the INR in there if she's on uh, Coumadin or Warfarin. So we'll put... Um, you know, our INR was 2.8, so that's right in the therapeutic range. We'll continue the warfarin, uh, continue her DILT, Rhythmol, and Digoxin for her rate control. Next one's back pain. Not very important, so um, I still have it on the list, though, because we are going to give her medications for it. GERD, uh, put her on the PPI. Her obstructive sleep apnea, so we're going to put her on her home BiPAP. Allergic rhinitis, so notice how this is pretty pretty low on the list of things that are important, as well as her nicotine dependence. I don't want to encourage her nicotine dependence, but we did write for a nicotine patch uh, if she needed it. Um, so this is kind of just a, I don't think, this was not from an H&P, this is from a progress note. Um, my H&P is a little more thorough, um, but this is kind of essentially how I like to write them, and I've gotten a lot of positive feedback on this is great because it's to the point, you're able to see what is wrong with the patient and what you're doing for it, and you don't have to read a novel to find out, okay, what am I actually doing? So um, this is the quick overview of how to do a soap note. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to holler at me, and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.